What is it that you're doing when you do that little practice Which move? One? You you kind of take it up and then squat and turn. Oh oh so yeah, uh, I'm just trying to keep my keep my legs wide so I don't buckle and slide. A lot of times, a lot of guys do a hip bump, which will ruin your lower back. And one thing that I'm trying to do is to not be too pigeon toed here, but it's like when you carry something real heavy, you kind of put yourself in a good position subconsciously and that's where you kind of want to be through your whole golf swing so so that you don't hurt and you injure yourself so aside from my posture and getting everything else how I like it I'm trying to rotate without collapsing my knees the whole way through so here and on the way down you kind of want to keep this angle so if I were to shove something here and torque it and keep your legs wide and that's a real good way to generate power it's like taking a longer wrench to torque a nut versus a smaller wrench, you're gonna get a lot more torque on the longer wrench. If you keep your legs wider, it's like being a longer wrench versus a shorter wrench when you collapse your knees, and you lose a lot of power, so that's cool. That's what I'm going for. Cut! Woo! Ooh. Tell me your name and what you do. Mason Mallory, I'm a, a golfer. I want to play on tour. I'm trying to get my card right now on a couple tours. Oh, that's... Tell me about your childhood. Uh, so I started playing sports real late because I had leukemia from four to nine years old. So I went through a bunch of chemo and I couldn't play sports until I was about nine and a half or 10. And then um, when I got my coordination good enough, I started playing sports in school but I wasn't very good. I had a, something called drag foot where your coordination isn't up to par with everybody else your age so my left foot would drag until I think I was about 13 or 14 and that kind of just erased itself after I started playing, um, started skating, doing extreme sports and that really helped get my coordination to what would be as close to the average bar for someone my age. Cool, so how old were you when you started playing golf? Uh, 16. That's a rip. Nice. Can't see how that's going to be bad. When I was 20, I played in a mini tour event and I, I won it shooting par or something like that. And that was probably the biggest high for me at that point. So, um, where are you now? Like, what's next for you? Uh, so, I'm just chasing Mondays, trying to do Monday qualifiers and um, haven't really done any schools outside of I did a web.com once didn't like it um, it's a real arduous process real tough process and a lot of the courses that they choose for these tournaments for Q school I mean you're playing against the best guys in the world and you're not getting pristine conditions so um, I think chasing Monday qualifiers is a really good way to do it people don't like doing it they think your chances are slim but when you have a perfect golf course um, you know you play against yourself I think even if the odds are against you You'd rather play a perfect golf course so there's no excuses at the end of the day and that's kind of the way I'm going. And I, I played in a PGA event last year in Canada. I won a Monday qualifier up in Vancouver. I saw the course once and the greens were amazing. Just give yourself a chance from 15 feet and in and you'll you'll make putts. So um, and then last week I almost got two weeks ago Shriners uh, PGA. Um, I attempted that and I got through the the pre-qualifier and then I got into the Monday and just missed getting into the event by by uh, two shots. One last question. So you got to see me play a little bit today. What kind of advice would you give a player at, that's try, like, you know where I'm at. I'm trying to get better. <laughs> you dress like Ben, you dress the part and you, your swing is real good. I think um, I think that your technique's not even bad in the strength in the places where you think you uh, need some help. I think that playing good golf courses is the number one thing to do. A lot of people think that their game's bad in certain areas when in fact it's not. You know, the course is actually a huge contributor to your score. I mean, it sounds cliche, but if you play good golf courses with good conditions that are consistent, um, then you can really benchmark where you stand. They're adding all these extra variables that the best players in the world do not have to deal with, so why should you? Um, and why should you compare yourself to somebody who doesn't have to deal with all those obstacles? So play good golf courses, and then you can really benchmark what you need help with, but until then, you're gonna be spinning your wheels thinking you need to work on a lot of stuff. Um, 
when in fact you don't. There's maybe a few things you need to work on. Do you have a golfer on your Christmas list? Get them the Hogan Code. Change your game, change your life.